Baker, uh, bringing you the weekly vlog. I am a former clutterholic who is on her own clutter clearing journey, uh, losing my weight clutter. I've been on this journey since November of 2015 uh, and I have, have gone past the halfway mark. So this week uh, I'm quite pleased with my weight loss. I lost uh, two pounds uh, when I weighed in this morning. Um, which is a real surprise because I actually weigh myself on a Tuesday morning and a Saturday morning. Saturday, I, I, I just weigh in to um, check that I'm on track um, with my weight loss, make sure that I haven't gained. And when I did weigh myself on Saturday, I had actually gained two pounds. So I did something I have never done before. <laughs> I noticed obviously that I'd gained two pounds and I chose to eat appropriately. I consciously reduced the amount of food that I ate over the weekend. Um, and that is significant for me. Uh, that is quite a milestone on my journey. Um, may not sound like much, and, and it, in a way it's interesting that that's only happened after a year <laughs> that I am consciously making decisions not to eat as much. Um, which says to me that there is some of this comfort eating and emotional meat eating that is finally being confronted and dealt with. If, if you've done any physical clutter clearing in your home with me, you'll know that I will say that it's not, necessar it's not, not necessarily the size of what you do, it's the significance. Um, uh, people who uh, manage to do their daily paperwork check-in and put all their new post and paperwork into one clearly defined home. That may not be huge in terms of size because it may only take you five minutes to do it, but that is significant if you are doing that every day because that is starting to create a new habit and make sure that the paperwork clutter doesn't grow. With, the, with weight loss, I felt that it was, with hindsight, that it was significant because I chose to be kind to myself. I chose to uh, take action that would mean that I had a better chance of at least maintaining my weight over the last week. Um, because although it doesn't stress me if I do put on a pound or two, because I know I will lose it, it, it obviously is, is nicer to know that you haven't gained weight because then at least you don't have to lose that extra weight again. So Saturday weighed in two pounds heavier uh, compared to last Tuesday. I decided to have a uh, low food weekend as it were. So uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday I have fast days which means that I essentially have a, a cheese omelette in the evening, three egg, three egg omelette. Um, and Whereas that would normally be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I decided to, to essentially do that on, Sat uh, on Sunday as well. Uh, and lo and behold, uh, it has helped because I've actually lost four pounds between Saturday and today, Tuesday. Um, so I've lost those two pounds that I gained between last Tuesday and Saturday and another two. So I'm really pleased with that, uh, but even more pleased that I made that conscious decision um, to take uh, to, to, to eat less. <laughs> um, that is a big shift for me, especially given that I am aware that that my eating and my weight and um, my past is such that I have um, the good girl <laughs> challenge, never a problem, the good girl challenge uh, where I am uh, a people pleaser. Uh, I put other people or I used to put other people before myself in terms of priority and that is starting to shift now. Um, I still notice myself doing it. Uh, obviously, you, can't, you know, I'm 43. These, <laughs> these are habits that have been there for a long time. Uh, but with my, with my counselling, with my uh, doing the doing, I am starting to realise that actually, you know what, it's really important that we look after ourselves whether that be with our weight, whether that be with our physical clutter, whatever it may be, we, we are important. And um, just like I say to my clients uh, in a plane, when you get the, the, the safety instructions, they tell you to put your gas mask on first before helping others. And obviously that's because 
if you don't put yours on, you could you could pass out and then you can't help anybody. Whereas actually, if you put your gas mask on first and then help others, at least you can keep going while you're helping others and you could probably help more people. Same principle. Uh, easy to understand the principle, <laughs> harder to live it. Um, so yes, so again, I'm, I'm noticing a, a shift, a significant uh, shift. Um, I suspect the weight gain that I had, the two pounds uh, weight gain that I had between Tuesday and Saturday, was because I had a little bit of a uh, emotional event, I think I'm calling it, <laughs> uh, on Thursday and and another one on Friday related to my family and I and I have a uh, uh, a difficult relationship, uh, particularly with my parents um, and. Um, I think my brain has been processing that and making sense of that, if you like, in this new, new age, this new Claire that has, has emerged over the last year, is dealing with what happened differently to how I would have dealt with it a year ago. Even actually, probably six months ago, I would have dealt with it differently. Um, so, yeah, in a way, my 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 body and myself have had a, um, a double hit this week uh, again not obvious not not anybody else would know but but um, mentally con subconsciously um, so and I didn't what I didn't do was do my comfort eating so I had these emotional events on Thursday and Friday and I didn't go to food <laughs> I listened to my body and said, what does it need? And what it actually needed was a weekend off. I haven't had a weekend off for about a month. And I was supposed to be doing uh, market stalls with my husband for his new part of the business. It was supposed to be the last weekend that we were doing market stalls. And we didn't. Um, because uh, he hadn't got everything ready that he wanted to have ready to sell on the market stall. Um, and as we know, if you don't feel confident doing it, then... Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be harder. I felt emotionally exhausted because of the emotional events that had happened on Thursday and Friday. Um, and we decided to put ourselves first, which again was an unusual uh, uh, response, a new experience response. Um, and, and that was absolutely the right thing to do because my body was telling me, you don't want food, you don't need food, you just need to rest, let your brain do what it needs to do. So on Sunday, I went back to sleep in midday for three hours uh, because my body was telling me that that's what it needed. Uh, and I was actually listening this time. <laughs> A year ago, I wouldn't have listened. I would have headed straight for the fridge um, uh, or takeaway probably. Um, but but again, a significant shift has happened and I am dealing with things differently. Um, I wouldn't say I've dealt with it yet. I've, I have my weekly weight counselling session today and I will be talking to my counsellor about the emotional events um, to try and understand it a bit more. Um, but uh, yes, so, so again, noticeable, significant that I dealt with it differently, uh, which is good. Um... Select again, yes. Um, other things I've noticed this week um, is, uh, the, I don't know if you've seen it, it's an American program. It's called, I think it's called Obese, A Year to Save My Life. Um, and it's on on a Sunday morning here in the UK. And because I wake up early now, <laughs> I normally wake up naturally at about seven o'clock in the morning. Um, and because on Sunday my husband was catching up on his sleep because he was exhausted, um, uh, I, I, I watched this and it really struck a chord and I don't think it was a coincidence given what had happened uh, Thursday, Friday and Saturday uh, in terms of my way. There was a lady on there, Georgian, I th Georgianne, I think, oh, a lady on there, and uh, she weighed... Uh, not a lot more, about 10 pounds more than what I weighed when I started. And there was a really poignant moment when she had realised that she too had put other people before herself and therefore she hadn't taken care of herself. 
and, and her body. And she used to be a gymnast and she, oh, cat's going mad. She, um, she wanted to be able to do a backflip and this was kind of her goal of being able to do a black backflip. And um, she did amazingly, she really did. And um, there was a really poignant moment when she, um, she said, uh, that, well, she realised, or they realised, that one of her issues was that she was a perfectionist. I can relate to this. And I'm sure a lot of the ladies uh, who have got physical clutter in their home can relate to this as well. She was a perfectionist. And she had that thing where if you can't do it perfectly, you're not going to do it at all. And it really struck a chord with me. And she had to overcome that it doesn't need to be perfect. It's, it's, it can be perfectly imperfect, but the mere fact that you've done it is what matters. And the guy, it's, it's a husband and wife team who were kind of like the, the coaches. Um, and they were really pleased. I think it was the nine, nine month weigh in and, and she hadn't met her goal. <laughs> it's only like three pounds off or something, but she hadn't met her goal. And they were, they, they, the guy actually said, really pleased that you didn't make your goal because you've been perfect up till now. Um, and it really struck a chord with me because I just thought, yes, there are so many things that we put off because if we can't do it perfectly, then, then what's the point? This woman was amazing. She lost, I think it was 94 pounds in the first three months. Um, now, I haven't even reached 94 pounds and I've been doing this for a year, you know. And it was funny because again, a year ago, I would have said, well, I'm not as good as her, so what's the point? Th this, this now, me now, is going really pleased for her. She did amazingly, it's an inspiration. I'm going to get to 94. I'm going to get, I'm going to get to 100. It's just a matter of, it's, 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 it's going to happen. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I found it really, really inspiring. Incidentally, that program is, is, is I think well done because it's a year. They give them a year uh, to do it and they work closely with them. And that is the essential concept that I would want uh, somebody to do in the TV world uh, for hoarding. Um, can we please stop these these blitz approaches uh, to for trying to cure hoarders? It's not going to work. But uh, if there are any TV producers out there who want to do uh, a program about hoarding, helping a hoarder in a year, um, then I'm here. <laughs> uh, I would be very interested because again, just like on that program, they get the physical, they help with the physical, they get help with the mental, they get help with the uh, the food. Exactly the same principle in terms of, of clutter. Whether you're a hoarder or just a general clutterholic, you need to deal with the backlog of clutter. You need to deal with the accumulation uh, of clutter. You need to deal with the organisation. It's a three-pronged attack when you work with me. Uh, it's not just trying to blitz uh, the backlog of clutter. Um, so yeah, so I, I actually, I, I, I like that programme. It is very inspirational. Uh, but this Women on Sunday, uh, Sunday's episode was particularly inspirational and it struck a chord. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and she got there, um, and, and, uh, and I know I will get there, uh, probably just not as quickly as her. A couple of other things I just want to mention, um, one exercise that I have found useful, which you might find useful, and I've done this before when I've done my weight loss, um, but there is a difference to it. I need to use my whiteboard. Oh, I need to use my whiteboard for this. Um, what I've done in the past, and I've and I've revisited it, um, is to get photographs of myself. I so cannot draw. And what I've tried to do uh, is get one photograph from each of my years of life. Uh, so one from my birth. And then one from when I'm roughly one year, two years, three years, and so on. Now, obviously, when I did Weight Watchers in 2009, there were seven less photographs. Although, admittedly, 
what is interested in do, interesting in doing this is actually finding photographs because there are quite a few years in my timeline of photographs where I haven't taken photographs or I haven't allowed myself to be photographed or I've got rid of photographs because I don't like the way that I look in them. So that in itself is quite an interesting exercise to do. Um, but then I have kind of put on key events um, of, of what's happened. So for example, when I was five, when I was five, when I was three, so three, six, seven. Yeah, when I was three, um, my brother was sent away to boarding school. He was sent away to boarding school at the age of six. Um, so that was a key event for me. Might not have been for, for, for anyone else. But again, these are the things that I remember. And I just chart, I just list uh, all of the things um, that have happened over my lifetime. Key events, relationships, um, uh, people of influence, um, activities. And it's quite interesting to notice how my weight has changed at key moments where, where certain things are going on. Um, and it kind of highlights how um, my weight has been very much about emotion and, and comfort. Um, and so that, that, that I have found a, a useful exercise. It's not a five minute job by any means. Um, first of all, finding the photographs, then putting them out on the dining room table uh, or floor space in order. Um, and then spending the time figuring it took it takes a, about a week <laughs> of, of kind of visiting and revisiting it uh, to remember things that happened and even a, a photograph where I look like I've put on weight and going I don't I don't know what happened in that year uh, you know and maybe asking uh, other people can you like my brother can you remember what happened uh, in that year what were the what were the key events did help me in terms of kind of tr starting to figure out what the triggers are for my comfort uh, and emotional uh, eating. And who knows, that, that exercise may have helped me uh, get to the point this weekend where I consciously chose not to comfort eat, but instead to go to bed and let my brain uh, do the subconscious processing that it needed to do. Uh, give it a go uh, if it can help. Obviously the counselling, uh, the weight counselling that I have helps as well uh, because it kind of throws up uh, things unexpectedly. Uh, that, that come to my it's amazing what comes to my mind when I'm sitting there in front of my counsellor things that I don't know where that came from um, but uh, it, it, it's very very useful and, and helps me understand that sequence much better last thing I just wanted to say because I'm, I'm realizing I'm, I'm warbling a lot um, my goal my goal for next week um, now I'm at the, the the three and a half pounds of the stone mark um, so I would quite like to get to the next stone, so i.e. lose three and a half pounds. Uh, so I am at that next stone. It would be lovely to think that I could get below the current stone that I'm at um, uh, by the new year. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge uh, because next weekend we're away. Mother-in-law's on some Saturday, sort of having our Christmas day and oh, she will put on a spread. <laughs> mother-in-law's infamous spread and I am going to have to resist the urge to be the good girl and and eat things because she's taken all this time and trouble and, and money uh, to put on a spread but I will have to go no it's not selfish to to uh, to, to say no it's it's looking after me um, and uh, we're possibly going to see uh, my husband's cousin and his wife on Sunday so again not it's, I'm not even calling it temptations now there will be situations where I may not have as much choice about what I eat as I would in my controlled environment of, of, of home and the, and the office. Uh, so again, pre-planning, taking uh, foods and snacks with me so that if people offer me things, I can kindly say, no, thank you, but I have got my own. So again, all these little things are starting to, to sort of come into play now and, and uh, start to work for me. Do let me know how you're getting on. Um, you know I love to know. Uh, next, next week I will share uh, some of the comments that have come in over the last few weeks. But uh, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for, for being there. The cat's trying to let me know that she's... Yes, I know, Dora. 
<laughs> I will uh, record another video blog obviously next uh, Tuesday uh, and in the meantime have a good week take care bye bye